hello and welcome to another week of Ask the Dietitian. And I'm Erin, for those of you that may not know me already, um, dietitian at UCSD Recreation. And I hope everyone's having a good week so far. It's pretty nice and sunny out, so it's kind of been typical San Diego weather, which is nice. And something that I kind of started doing, um, I think the last two weeks was kind of talking about a fun food that I've been finding or trying. So hopefully that maybe gives you some inspiration for something new to try um, for you. You know, um, I'm always looking for new recipe ideas and summer is literally, I think, such a great time because there's so much produce available, especially if you're in California. Um, and then a lot of kind of easy you know, no cook meals, which are nice, or, you know, using the grill or, and other things. So this week um, I had grilled corn, which was fabulous and only takes a couple minutes, but totally elevates that meal. Um, so definitely try that if you haven't, it really just kind of helps to give it a new texture, flavor, um, which is what I'm all about, you know, trying, even though, you know, it might be something you eat or eat, Typically, um, it's always fun to try new ways of cooking things um, just to keep it fun, exciting, right? <laughs> so for today's topic, uh, we will be doing a little deep dive on intuitive eating, an area that I'm super passionate about um, and that I love a lot. So we'll kind of talk a little bit about intuitive eating. And then as always, feel free, leave your questions, comments, other nutrition questions, and um, and the the comments and we will get to them at the end. So intuitive eating, um, something that's definitely getting more popular, but I'm hearing it a little bit more commonly and, um, but it's not anything typically like new, which is kind of nice. Um, so if you maybe watch my other videos, especially last week, I talked about kind of why diets don't work and kind of a lot of the problems that we see happen definitely check out that video if you haven't already on Triton Dines. But really the thing I think for a lot of people that struggle with eating, you know, is okay, I've tried diets and that doesn't work, but what do I do then, right? And intuitive eating, I think is such a great approach because it looks at the whole person. It looks holistically at meeting your physical and getting your also like your psychological needs met as well. So it really kind of looks at our full body, looks at all these different areas of health, and it was really designed and written by two dietitians in the 90s after they found that people were constantly struggling with this kind of, you know, old school mentality of like, follow this plan and lose weight, right? We already talked about that, doesn't really work. So the intuitive eating is really about building awareness and attunement with your body's, you know, hunger cues, fullness cues, but again, it's really more than just that physical piece. It's also, again, getting your physical needs met um, through what you're eating, through moving your body, um, taking care of yourself, but again, also those psychological needs. And it's learning how to kind of really do self-care, um, but it kind of goes even deeper than that. So really the main principles that are within this book are um, one, really kind of challenging these distorted thoughts and beliefs we have, especially when it comes to food, um, food police, you know, these kind of food police thoughts we might have where we feel like we have to eat good or bad foods, um, thoughts that we have about what we can and can't eat, all of these kinds of things that we really start to unlearn a little bit. And again, building that awareness with your body, you know, what's your hunger cues? What are your fullness cues? Eating to comfortable hunger, comfortable satiety, including foods that are satisfying, that taste good. Um, and then also a lot of the other topics really look at kind of your relationship with food. And maybe you use food as a way to cope with your feelings. Um, we all do that, right? We're all humans, we all use food. But if that's kind of your go to mechanism or your, only way of kind of coping or numbing or distracting, then we really need to kind of find other strategies and tools so food is not that go-to. So a big part of this is also trying to kind of untangle that relationship between food and feelings and finding other ways to self-soothe and finding other ways to really nourish your body. And then as I mentioned, so those are kind of, you know, a lot of the physical needs, but there's also a lot, a lot of focus on joyful movement, right? We know that physical activity, moving our bodies is 
so necessary for our overall health, our well being um, from a physical point of view to also kind of an emotional. And again, they really highlight the importance of this, but the nuance is really finding movement that you like, um, not because you feel like you have to do it and not kind of, you know, having it be something that's tied to calories or weight or what you've eaten. It's really finding activities that are joyful, that you feel good doing. Um, and it also means you're gonna stay doing them longer, right? If you're kind of forcing yourself to do an activity that you don't like, chances are you're not gonna stick to that for very long. Um, and then the other kind of pieces are also body image and understanding that we have different body sizes and that's okay. And it's really coming from this um, kind of weight neutral perspective that weight does not determine our health. And we have to look you know, deeper than that at our health um, and really acceptance of, of different body sizes of different body types. Um, and also working kind of in that own, working with your own body image. And then the last part that they also talk about in the intuitive eating is then kind of bringing in what they call gentle nutrition, um, which I love how they kind of say it that way. But that's where we know, you know, okay, so we're eating more to our body's hunger fullness. We're eating foods that are satisfying. We're kind of starting to unlearn, um, you know, maybe these old rules we have around food. We're incorporating, you know, joyful movement and more self care and all these great things. And then the last piece is then kind of bringing it all together with, okay, and now we're eating, you know, in terms of food that is going to give us energy and that's more nutrient dense. And the great thing is that typically if you go through this process, which takes months, um, if not years really, that over time you do start to find that you're going to be eating foods that do make you feel good. You're going to be eating foods that give you energy. You're going to be eating stuff that tends to just feel better in your body because you have such a greater awareness and attunement. And so it's kind of this weird thing where you can't start out that way. Um, but at the end, you'll kind of find that over time you are really incorporating, you know, fresh fruits and vegetables or not even fresh, but incorporating fruits and vegetables, incorporating whole grains, you know, incorporating the foods that we also kind of know are associated with better health outcomes. And you find that when you do eat other types of foods, um, you know, that you enjoy it, that you're eating it for your satisfaction, that you're eating it in kind of to a comfortable degree of fullness. Um, and it doesn't take up all this extra brain space and time and energy, right? We're not shaming ourselves or having guilt. Um, so that's kind of intuitive eating in a nutshell, I guess. Um, there's so much more kind of involved in all these different principles and you can definitely find more um, online about it um, at intuitive eating, but it's just a really great way, I think, of not only looking at food and your relationship with food, but also with yourself and kind of figuring out um, just that greater awareness, um, which is honestly really important, um, not just when it comes to food, but again, kind of overall these health behaviors. So, a little bit on intuitive eating. Um, definitely let me know if you have any other questions, any other nutrition questions that you'd like me to answer. You can definitely feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, additionally, next week will be all about sugar. So definitely just tune in next time for that. I know that's always a, a really hot topic um, to discuss. So we'll talk a little bit about sugar next week. And as always, you can find other videos on Triton Dines on the YouTube channel, as well as on the Rec Playground. So feel free to look up any other great topics. Um, like I mentioned, I talked about why diets don't work last week. So definitely check out that one if you haven't already. Um, also things like supplements, probiotics, um, keto, intermittent fasting. So feel free to check out all those other great resources. And I will see everyone next week. Bye.